Welcome to Taipei Day 2 where we'll be focusing on motors, displays and batteries. And could this be the full power motor of the future? Taiwanese brand Hyena, they've got a new drive unit which is the UniDrive. It's 70 Nm, 2.4 kilos, uh, it's very small, compact and also very smart. Uh, as part of an e-bike system, they have the display, a very neat remote, a 540 watt hour battery which weighs in at 3 kilos and also a range extender which is 172 watt hours weighing in at 1 kilo. Now, to put this motor into a time frame, I think it was six years ago that Shimano had the E7000, which was, I think it was, it was 65 Nm, around about three kilos, was actually considerably bigger than this unit. Um, from a modern day perspective, we have the likes of Fazua and TQ and the Bosch SX, slightly less power, it's, you know, on average about 50 for the TQ, 55 for the Bosch SX, and 60 for the Fazua. I guess the question is, is will those smaller light to mid assist motors be like this in the future? How long will it be? I actually had one journalist here which said, do you know what, it's inevitable that that will happen, and, and so what? So what that brands such as Hyena make these motors, which I'm not sure I like that tone so much. I think it's great to have diversity in the market. Um, okay, it's, it's 2.4 kilos, it's smaller, it's lighter. So what? I still like the Shimano EP801s, the Bosch CXs, and we recently rode the, you know, the, the, the Yamaha PWX3. I don't think weight matters. I think the question here is, what is the future for those mid-assist motors? Okay, so we've got motors which are smaller, more compact, lighter, and with more power. I think that counts for nothing if we don't talk about the batteries. Now, this is the 540 watt hour battery from Hyena. True, it's a really good size, which means the down tubes of the bikes will be super neat. Weight of this uh, battery is three kilos. Now, put that into perspective of what that Shimano E7000 was uh, back in 2016, that weighed 2.4 kilos. So the weight of the batteries hasn't actually decreased that much. So we'll be looking for some lighter weight batteries today. And remember, of course, you've got these range extenders too. So let's have a look now at some other brands. This is the Bafang MA20 motor, 2.3 kilos, 75 newton meters. Is this the smallest, lightest, and most powerful? light to mid assist mid drive motor i wouldn't actually call it uh, light to mid assist i'd actually call that a full power e mountain bike motor i mean for me this is probably state of the art when it comes to uh, a mid drive system of that size and that power for most people 75 newton meters will be enough but it's not just the motor as we mentioned earlier what about the battery well bafang do a 360 watt hour battery in tube what I like about this, or what I think I like about this, is the fact that you can have 360 in the down tube, and then how easy is that to just stick a spare in your backpack rather than have a range extender? And maybe not one, but maybe have two 360 watt hour batteries in your backpack, you go over the 1000 watt hours, and 75 newton meter motor, the range on that will be incredible. There you go, folks. It's funny, isn't it? You know, we're talking about you know, what is the sweet spot when it comes to uh, a low to mid assist motor. We're talking about batteries, talking about displays and, and, uh, and remotes and things like this. But the bottom line is that the e-bike system is, is not enough just by itself. You need to have a great frame, you need to have good suspension, you need to have the right wheel size, the right amount of travel, the type of riding that you do. Uh, I think KTM is a fantastic example of, of the complete integration of an e-bike system. You know, this is the, the lightweight trail, 140 mil travel bike. You've got bikes such as the Machina Prowler, which is, you know, the full power bike with the, the Bosch CX motor. So, so, yeah, I think, you know, the integration, the top tube display, the kind of remote, what, whatever type of remote you want. So there's lots in this whole business about you know, choosing the right motor, the right battery, uh, and the app and the display and everything for you. So KTM, fantastic example about putting the whole thing together. 
It's pretty funny. We talk about the likes of Bosch, Bros, Shimano, Yamaha, TQ on a weekly basis. But there is another world out there which is pretty much hammered home when you come to a bike show. This is Motonova. They've got a whole range of mid drives from 75 newton meters up to 120 newton meters. But what blows my mind as well is the fact that they've chosen as a backdrop good old Wales to showcase their motors. Uh, we're now at Kynamic, which is another local motor producer from Taiwan. Kynamic's mid-drive. Now, this is just about 2.3 kilos. It's 70 newton meters. also got a 540 watt hour battery, range of display, so a really good e-bike system from Taiwan. Astro from the center of Taiwan can make you a down tube which is compatible with both Bosch, Yamaha and also Shimano. There's a bike over here which I'd like to draw your attention to. Okay, well, we've got quite an audience here already. We're all right here as well. Uh, so this is really neat bike. They, as you can see, they've tilted this Shimano EP8 motor. Uh, so it gives you room to have a, a bigger battery and a lower center of gravity on this bike. If you wanted to buy this bike, about $600, it's... Um, Carbon fiber front end, aluminium back end, 150 mil travel. Now, Eric from Astro has showed me a neat little feature on this bike. Obviously, if you're an urban e-biker, depending on your weight, you could either need like a 400 watt hour or an 800 watt hour, depending on your commute and your weight. So, now what we have here is, well, it's not actually a battery. It's pretending to be a battery, but it's actually a toolbox, as you can see here. So, the idea behind this is the fact that if you're a heavier rider, you can actually have a 400 watt hour in here. And this is actually what a 400 watt hour looks like. And I really do think that this modular setup could work very well in e-mountain bikes as well. So that's what a 400 watt hour looks like. As you can imagine, you can fit one of them into your backpack pretty easily. So modular, I definitely think is something we should be looking at more of in the future. Uh, Leo, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah, do we got a uh, uh, system. No, no need for electricity or engine. It could store the energy by itself. So like here, you could have a torsion spring inside, so the rider could store the energy for 10 seconds and then ride for 10 kilometers more for, for energy free. So not, not, like the, uh, not like the usual electricity bicycle, it requires energy, but you have some environmental problem here. But now we don't need any battery or engine here. Wow. Now that's different. Thanks, Leo. Yeah. Guaranteed there's always some displays to look at at a bike event. The question is, are you a big display person or do you go for a more minimalist approach? Well, this is DigiWise, which is coming from Shenzhen, Shenzhen in China. Uh, as you can see here, you've got a display with all the metrics and it gradually gets smaller and smaller to something which is Probably more my cup of tea. You know, it's a controller as well as a display. You've got sport, eco, tour on this on this display here. Really small. It's not going to get harmed from when you fall off the bike. Um, the northbound system, uh, and I'm actually wearing just one part of that system, which is this e-bike smart helmet. I can I hear it going off in my in my head here? So on the back here, you can control such things as left and right indicators, the brake lights, the music. There's definitely something dinging going on in my head here. You can also set up a group ride where you can communicate with each other. But more than that, you can control such things as wearables, such as your heart rate. Um, a lock system, your tire pressure, navigation, the gears on your bike, the fork pressure. I mean, it's simply endless. Just, I've got to take this off. There's something going on in my head there. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Sorry, did you? I just banged your helmet. Um, so, yeah, like I said, the northbound system, controllable via your handlebar, but also voice activated as well. Pretty mental. The company we're familiar with, Ananda. Some big powerhouses here, 130 newton meter M100, 100 newton meter M230, and the 100 newton meter M4000. So, plenty of oomph. Cloud Drive from China. They make remotes, controllers, uh, range extenders, but more than anything, they make some of the smartest displays on the market. As you can see, we have an integrated uh, stem display here. All the metrics on there. If you want something a little bit different, they've got plenty on offer. I think you might have seen some of these displays on bikes we've shown, a Eurobike or Rock Desert and Sea Otter in the past. Um, all the metrics on there, uh, all accessible via cloud and their app. I actually came across something called uh, Geo Fencing, which is this 
kind of boundary which you can set up for an e-bike for maybe your kids not to go outside of. So there you go, folks. Cloud Drive from China. Very smart and uh, certainly a brand to look for in the future. Now we're going to probably do a bit of sightseeing later in the week and we'd like to go and see Hoan San which is a mountain uh, near Tai Chung. Apparently the weather in Tai Chung is a little bit better than it is in Taipei. Uh, now continuing the theme of lightweight. Now as I mentioned earlier, uh, things are getting lighter and smaller than they were six years ago. So here's a modern day 500 watt hour battery. So for me, this makes much more sense to have something like this in your backpack than a range extender and also more watt hours, more fuel in the tank. Now, I noticed a couple of comments from you guys on a video which Owen did on the running costs of an e-mountain bike. We didn't talk about batteries or replacement costs. Um, obviously, the, uh, the life of a battery is down to where and how you use it, how you charge it. So here at Merry, it actually got a diagnostics kit which uh, tells the company of when and where the battery's been charged and also the maximum and minimum temperature. So one customer came to them and said, oh, the battery's not working. And that's simply because he was being used in Alaska at temperatures down to minus 40. Not good. Right, let's return our attention to drive units. Um, what about if your needs for an e-mounted bike are all about having a discrete system? Obviously, TQ have led the way with the HPR50 on the Trek Fuel EXE. Are there alternatives? Well, yes, there are, and it comes in the shape of the Delta. We've seen this on the Meta bike, which is also a Taiwanese company. Um, the Delta motor, 90 Nm, that's almost double the power of the TQ HPR50. Remember, TQ have got the HPR 120, which is 120 Nm, but it's considerably bigger than this. This is actually 2.8 kilos. Um, it is very compact, as you can see, it just sits there in, the side, in, in my hand. But not only have they got the 90 newton meter version, which we saw on the Meta bike, but we also got a 70 newton meter 2.4 drive unit. So uh, very exciting times, I think, from Taiwan. Uh, I'd like to see these on more bikes in the future. So let's know what your thoughts are. MPF drive from Taiwan, made in Taiwan, made in Vietnam. Uh, these are the 60 newton meter drive units, weighing in at uh, 2.4 and 2.7 kilos. Obviously, you've got the, the heavier duty, uh, higher power ones at 90 newton meters. But what's quite interesting here is the fact that uh, some of those motors have got some lubrication inside. Don't see that very often. Okay, we're at Truck Run. Elise is going to take it away from us. Hello, hello. But then? Hell of a case, mind. Uh, right, we've talked about weight, we've talked about power. I think it's really important to uh, talk about the battery and the ability to to remove that battery, to either charge it or to put another battery in. So I think Truck Run, this option here, similar to the Fazua and the Maxon, this is their new sub two kilo offering. Um, it's 60 Nm, so it's a great mid assist motor. I guess the great thing about a motor such as this is you can mount it vertically so that you can put the battery in this way and pull it out kind of thing. Hope that makes sense. Right, what about motor gearbox options? Now, I know you guys have let us know in the comments that we want to see more of these on the channel. Uh, Vallejo, I've actually ridden this motor in the Alps. It wasn't quite there for me of the version I rode at least. But what we're looking at is 130 Nm, uh, a seven speed automatic gearbox. Remember that's uh, the gears and the motor in one. Obviously, it's a little bit more weight. Um, for me, from the Taipei show, doesn't quite make it. Let's go and look at some more. Mind e-bike, I think this is food for thought. Um, it's actually primarily designed for city use, but it's capable of 40 Nm, uh, two kilos. And I think when it comes to, from a design perspective, uh, it's super compact. And I think designers of mountain bikes might need to take something like this into consideration when they're doing their bikes because it's different like it well there you go uh, yes I know that most of the e-mountain bikes we ride are dominated by the likes of Bosch uh, Shimano Yamaha Bros TQ but I think it's nice to think that there is room for some of the other smaller brands on the market um, the whole business of serviceability I think there's now peace of mind now they've been down to see the likes of the e-bike motor center. I mean, at the end of the day, they're not complicated pieces of equipment and they can be fixed. Similarly to like a car or a motorcycle or anything like that. Um, 
We would like to know your thoughts on some of the products we've seen today. So yeah, get involved and uh, we'll see you on the next visit.